For the following exercise, determine whether the relation represents y as a function of x. All right, so in order to make the determination whether y here is a function of x, the first thing we want to do is to solve the equation for y. All right, so let's set that up. So to solve the equation for y, I'm just going to bring y on over to the left. You don't have to, but I like y on the left, x on the right. I guess it's my OCD. Anyway, um, so now what I need to do is solve this equation for y. I don't want it to be y squared. I want it to be y. So the question is, what do we do to get rid of the square? Well, to get rid of the square, we would square root both sides, right? So I'll take the square root of the left side, square root of the right side. When I do that, anytime I take the square root of a square, I always get just the value inside of that square root by itself, right? Essentially, the square root cancels the square. All right. So, that, so then, therefore, we now have y equals radical x. Now, don't forget this. It's usually forgotten. I do it sometimes too because usually we're not thinking about what the signs of this answer should be. But technically, anytime you take the square root of a square, you will always get a positive and negative result. Well, why is that the case? Well, if we think about going backwards, okay, so pretend I were to take this thing and square it, right, that would have gotten me back to my original y squared. And if I took this side and squared it, that would have gotten me back to my original x. Okay, so let's consider what happens when I square a positive and negative y value. For example, if I have positive 3, what is the square of positive 3? Well, that's positive 9. What is then the square of negative 3? Well, that's also positive 9. Right, that's the point. Okay, the point is that whenever you square root a square value, the result the y value could have been either positive 3 or negative 3. Both of them would have given you the same result. And therefore, we can never forget the fact, and I'm just going to erase this work, we can never forget the fact that the y value here will always be positive and negative. Anytime you take a square root of a square, you'll always get the positive and negative answer. Okay, so now, creating the appropriate function here, all we need to do now is just get rid of the positive and negative and bring it on over to the right hand side. Okay, in other words, you can rewrite it this way, that y will be equal to positive or negative radical x. Now, we're gonna to look to graph this thing, but you might say, well, how do I graph that with a positive and negative? Well, what we do is we now gonna break this thing up into two separate equations. Okay, one equation will be for the positive and the other equation will be for the negative. So in other words, it's going to look just like this. So y will equal positive radical x. You obviously don't need the positive there though, right? You could just have it radical x. And the second one would be y is equal to negative radical x. Okay, so when you go into your calculator now, these are the two things you're going to graph. There's going to be two functions that you have to graph. All right, that's the key to this problem. So now when we do that, okay, so you can take that, plug it into your calculator. And we realize that we are now, hey, let me change the color. We now realize that we're going to get two graphs, okay? They're gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna represent one total graph, but they're gonna be two separate pieces, okay? The first piece is gonna look something like this in your calculator, right? It's gonna look something like that. Okay, and the second piece is gonna look something like this. They're symmetric. It's symmetric about the x-axis, okay? So this is the graph of the function that we had originally, okay? This graph represents this, well, I shouldn't say function because I don't know if it is a function, okay? This graph, I'm, I'm giving you a little, uh, I'm, I'm foreshadowing the answer here. Um, so this particular graph um, looks like this when you plug it into your calculator. Now we have to test whether it is a function or not. Okay, remember to do that, we are going to conduct the vertical line test, right? So let's copy this. We'll paste another one, okay? The vertical line test, right, says that if a vertical line does not intersect the graph more than once, then the graph is a function. In other words, if it does intersect the graph more than once, then it is not a function, okay? So if I draw a vertical line here, what happens? Uh-oh, we intersect the graph in two separate locations. That now proves to us that this is not a function. So anytime a vertical line intersects a graph, 
in two or more locations, you can definitively state that it is not a function. So that's the answer. All right, guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Please remember to hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, tell your friends, and we'll see you in the next question. Take care.